Wow. Hi, Ed. So, sorry, we're running a little late. We hit every red light for the last 75 miles, but here we are, and we knew you wouldn't start without us. Uh, let's see, I can't really get up anywhere. Uh, normally, I do this for my pickup truck, and I can stand up on the tailgate. A pile of rocks. That's all right. We'll, we'll go from here. I'm not, that, I'm not that good looking anyway. So, my name is Ed Clark. I'm the president of the Wildlife Center of Virginia. Some of my colleagues are here with me today. And I, oh, podium. Look at that. <laughs> hey, all right. Thank you, sir. Where there's a will, I want to be in it. I love it. Well, the, uh, the whole purpose of the day is to celebrate the successful recovery of a bald eagle. And, but before we start talking about this specific bird, I want to tell you a little bit about the Wildlife Center so you'll understand the context within which this whole thing is taking place. Now, a lot of you, I know, see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of veterans of eagle releases. So how many of you here have been to more than 10 eagle releases? A <laughs> few. We got some hardcore here. But uh, we, we do a lot of this, and we appreciate them. But uh, this is an adult bird that we're bringing back because part of what we try to do at the Wildlife Center is to give animals a second chance. We are a teaching and research hospital for wildlife medicine. We're not your government tax dollars at work. We are a nonprofit organization. We exist entirely from support from the general public and, and other private funding. But we train veterinarians and veterinary students from all over the entire world that come here to Virginia, learn how to care for individual animals, and as is the case with this eagle and any of the other patients, it's important that we care for the individual animal, but at the Wildlife Center, it's sometimes even more important to us to find out not just what's wrong with the animal, but why was it injured in the first place. And one of the things we are seeing now with eagles in particular is a very, very high percentage of the birds coming in have been lead poisoned. And we know where the lead's coming from. It's, it's coming from ingesting either the remains of animals or, or animals that have been shot and not recovered. They're bullet fragments. Now, we're not indicting hunters. I've, I'm a lifelong shooter and a hunter, and that's not what we're complaining about because we did not know for the last 500 years that this was such an issue. What has changed is not that the bullets are more toxic. What has changed is our ability to diagnose lead poisoning. So in our hospital, when an animal comes in that has signs of neurologic deficit, uh, blindness, can't open its feet, things of this nature, we will always do a blood test. And one of the things we're finding in as many as 70% of the eagles that come in is elevated levels of lead in their blood. A normal level is zero, no lead in the blood. And it gets to a certain point, we then have to begin treatment. And so those are some of the ways in which we take individual animal cases and it provides a window on entire species, entire ecosystems, and indeed on the environment on which wildlife and humans both depend. Now our work is done in partnership with a variety of state agencies. Certainly the most uh, important relationship to us is with the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, our state wildlife agency but the Department of Conservation and Recreation and specifically Department of, or the uh, State Parks Division are partners in not only the conservation and management of wildlife, but especially when we t need to bring an animal back and return it to the wild. We're so fortunate to have state parks to work with so that we can return an animal to an appropriate habitat right on the river, but also with appropriate trees around, close to where it was found, where we have professionals able to keep an eye out should this animal get in trouble after its release. Now, this particular bird came from this particular area, uh, was found, I guess, on one of the local piers. Uh, you all probably know more stories. One of uh, your Stafford County's finest here, your animal control folks. Uh, Anthony McCall. Anthony McCall. All right, this is the guy without whom this bird would not be alive. Uh, what were the circumstances? Well, we received a call on Mother's Day for a... Uh... Can you hear back there? No. Okay, shout out. <laughs> well, we received a call on Mother's Day for an eagle sitting on a pier. Uh, the complainant 
kids are here. And uh, I went out on scene. We had to locate the eagle again because it went into the water and made its way to the bank. Uh, a few minutes later, going down the bank, we flushed the eagle out. And uh, it tried to fly, but it landed back in the water again. So I went back into the water to try to catch the uh, bird. It came back to the bank. Once it made its way back to the bank, I was able to catch it. And uh, we contacted the uh, conservation police officers who came and gave it to these wonderful people here. Oh, okay, wonderful. well, thank you for your good work. Thank you. The was a mile from here? Maybe a mile. Okay. Yeah, so the, you know, so the bottom line is if this bird wants to go back to that spot, it'll be back to that spot before we're back to the road. <laughs> so, uh, now, the truth is we can't save every single animal that comes to the Wildlife Center. But the bottom line is if people like this officer did not make an effort to try, none of them would be saved. And that's really the message that we try to bring out. And even if an animal comes into us and does not survive to be released, many times we're able to learn what's wrong with that animal and it puts us on to environmental issues that are, are often bigger than those affecting just an individual animal. Now, what's going to happen right now is the, the eagle is in here, and uh, it's going to take a, a couple of minutes to get the bird out. He's been in the dark for several hours, so he, when I went to put the cage in, I looked in the side and didn't see anything, and I thought, oh my lord, they you know gave me the wrong box. Well, it turned out he was lying in the bottom of the cage, sound asleep. <laughs> And uh, that's because it's completely dark in there. Now, one of the things that people always ask about is, okay, why don't you just open the cage and let him fly away? Well, if you've ever come into uh, a room uh, when you've been out in the snow, and suddenly you know what snow blindness is. It's where your eyes adjust to one light extreme, and then you come into another, and then suddenly you can't see, or you've been indoors in a dark room, and you get into very, very bright lights, your eyes take time to adjust, and, and that's what we need to do here. So when I get the bird out, I'm actually uh, going to call on a couple of my colleagues who are here with me to help me do that so that I don't show you the color of my blood, <laughs> which I have done on occasion at Eagle Releases, though not, not by choice, I will say. Uh, but we're going to get the bird out. I'll get the bird in a comfortable position where I can hold him, and then we'll let people, we're going to get people to line up in kind of a semicircle, and I'll walk down the line so you can get a picture of the bird so that you can get a good look at the bird, and particularly the kids, and uh, that'll give him a chance for his eyes to adjust, to see all these people, and recognize he wants to get the heck out of here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, people say, oh, doesn't it stress the bird? Well, that's not an entirely bad thing. We don't want him to hang around and, you know, be around people. That's that's the problem. So, uh, in any case, that's, that's the plan, and uh, it'll take us a while to do that. Now, before I get diving into that, uh, this, the bird, well, we'll tell you about his injury and all when we get him out, but does anybody have any questions about the Wildlife Center, about eagles, anything? Now's a good time because now I can focus. Is that hey. an eagle feather right this there? This is not an eagle feather. This is a vulture feather. This is a uh, feather. This is what's uh, called a primary flight feather, and this is actually off the vulture's left wing. And I know that because this is the leading edge of the feather that cuts through very, very stiff feather. So this is the one that provides lift. Hmm. So eagles have very similar feathers. They, they're a little different in coloration. But here's a point. If you find these feathers, and there's one over there, don't take them home because it's against the law for you to have these feathers or any native wildlife feather without a permit. Now the reason for that is it's part of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Now people go, you know, what the heck has a treaty got to do? I found a feather on the ground, what's the big deal? Well, when that law was passed, one of the things that was happening in the United States at that time is ladies' hats had feathers on them, which is why we don't have Carolina parakeets anymore. Once the most populous and numerous bird in the eastern United States, completely extinct, 
because the fashion was to put the bird on the side of a hat. What a great hat. Hey, lady, you got a dead bird on your head. But the, the other thing is that feathers, eggs, nests became collectibles. People would start these big collections of bird eggs and bird feathers, and they would literally think nothing of killing the bird to get the feathers. Now the, the big issue with feathers is there is a black market in particularly eagle feathers, and I'm, I'm an expert witness for the United States Department of Justice and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I travel all over the United States testifying against people that kill eagles and sell their feathers, and that's for uh, Native American memorabilia that is in, there's a whole big black market for that, for groups that compete in Native American competitions, and for people that just want them. And ironically enough, there are a whole bunch of people that say, I used to be an Eagle Scout, I want to have an Eagle mounted in my basement. Well, that's a little inconsistent with what being an Eagle Scout is all about, but there you go. So, if you find feathers, feel free to look at them, enjoy them, take a look at them, and put them back on the ground where they belong. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, there's something I read in the news the other day about some, I don't want to get into politics, but Obama signing some 30-year moratorium on... Hunting eagles? Well, no, the, the, uh, the question was, what is this 30-year thing about hunting eagles? And there was actually a proposal for a 30-year permit for the wind energy uh, industry to be able to put up wind energy and not be prosecuted for killing eagles for 30 years. Okay. And right. so big controversy over that, and apparently it's still undecided. Okay, there, so a lot it's of not hunting. I'm sorry? It's not hunting. It's not hunting. No, no. It's, okay. it's what's called taking, but it's not hunting. No, nobody hunts eagles. That's against the law and, and still will be. Okay. So, but that, that is not, that issue is not decided. All right. Um, Karen, where are you? Karen Lambie? Hey, come on up here. They, one of the problems with coming in at the last minute is I don't get to meet everybody first, and I apologize again for that. But I want to introduce our host and uh, say hello. Nice Hi. to see you, and uh, thank you for having us at your park. And Absolutely. please, here, you want the, the rock, or you know, yeah. may already I fall think off? I, I think I better stand right here. Right thank you, though. Yeah, thank you all for coming out, and welcome to, uh, to Widewater State Park. Um, as you can see, we don't have any facilities here yet, including an actual parking lot. Um, but we're hoping to change that in the near future. We're actually beginning construction already. And we're, we're breaking ground on the park uh, early next year. And if things go well, we'll probably open up it to the public with facilities in uh, early 2017. And if uh, the, the 2016 bond referendum, which I, I'm hearing word about, kind of comes to fruition, we might get additional funds for, in addition to the visitor center, a boat launch facility, maybe eventually cabins and campgrounds too. So, okay. if, you want to, if you want that, let your uh, let your legislators know. All right. <laughs> now, that was not official yeah. lobbying by a state that employee. Not, <laughs> not, not, that, that was, was public not. education. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you want to see this park develop, support the bond initiative for uh, state park development. And Absolutely. and the money invested in state parks in Virginia has been some of the best money invested by our General Assembly, I can assure you. Absolutely. We're very excited to have the Eagle release here. This is one of the, the first official programs <coughs> that we've ever had at the park. And once I was contacted uh, late last week about it, I said, let's make it happen. And <laughs> Here we are. Out. Well, when, when we heard that uh, you weren't sure the road was going to be ready, I, driving in, I thought, that's the road you meant. And <laughs> turning in here, now I get it. <laughs> so, oh, we've got a bush hog a road. <laughs> so, but thank you for having us, Karen, and nice to nice to be with you. And we look forward to visiting with you a little later. Don't go away. We'll get a picture with you in the Eagle okay, for the good. new visitor center when the bond initiative passes and you get your money. <laughs> All right. So think positive. Any other questions before we dive into the box? Yes, ma'am. Do you have? Is there another one? Gonna, another Eagle release later this week? Or there something? is another Eagle release, not here, okay. but down at Chip Oaks State Park. Another state park as I mentioned, our, our partners there, uh, and that's east of Hopewell, and that's an immature bird that will be released tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. So if any of you all get addicted, we can supply your habit, you can get another eagle fixed tomorrow. We've actually got five more birds that are in the pipeline that we'll, we hope to be releasing uh, in the coming weeks. So it's going to be a, a busy eagle season for us. All right, any more questions real quick? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the Wildlife Center of Virginia, our hospital is located, thank you for asking, uh, in Waynesboro, Virginia. 
Uh, we, are, as it turns out, we are more than two hours away from here with red lights and traffic. Uh, so I didn't allow enough time. But uh, we're we're right off Interstate 64. We're not open to the public. But if you want to find out about us, go to wildlifecenter.org. Wildlifecenter.org. And not only can you find out about the Wildlife Center, we've got live streaming video of some of the eagles there. We've got a bunch of baby bears uh, that are being raised in a new facility we built in partnership with the game department. A lot of interesting things. Yes? Is the bird tagged or is it being tracked? Uh, all right, good question. When I get the bird out, I'll show you the bird. Is The question was, is he tagged or banded and is he going to be tracked? And the answer is yes to both. He has a band on his leg, and he has a, a cellular transmitter on his back. And from the moment this bird is out and the, and the sun hits the solar panel on that, we'll be able to follow this bird. We now have, um, what is it, five, where'd my colleague go? I think we have four or five eagles out, four eagles out there with transmitters on them now. And one of the things that we have proven in that partnership project with the Department of Game and Inland Fisheries is that the captive rearing of eagles, bird falls out of the nest, can't fly, we raise it in captivity, we have proven that that bird can successfully return to the wild, act normally. And for decades, traditional biologists, traditional thinkers viewed wildlife rehabilitation and wildlife medicine as a feel-good, meaningless, do-nothing activity, we now have proven that it really does count and we really can get these birds back out. We've got one bird that's been out now for four years and acting completely normally, brought into our hospital uh, while it was still a chick in the nest. So, but yes, thank you for asking that question. I'll, I'll try to show you the transmitter uh, when I get the bird out. All right, any more questions here before we dive in? Yes, sir, you got a question? Or are you just waving? One, one quick one on yes. that uh, track data. Is that track data available on the track web? Track data is on our website. Excellent. So you can go there and follow the, uh, the type of technology we use is cellular, not satellite. Satellite is extremely expensive. So basically this is a cell phone and this bird calls home every 48 hours. And it <laughs> collects information every 15 minutes on the exact longitude and latitude the bird is, uh, is where it is located, uh, how fast it's moving, how high off the ground it is, lots and lots of information, and it stores it in this tiny little backpack that's about the size of a deck of playing cards. Every 48 hours, when it gets in touch with a cell tower, it does a, a, a compressed download of digital data that goes into the servers and is translated into map data, and that's available on our site. All right, last question here before we get started. We'll have more time later. I saw on your website that you do have field trips. Um, so do you have any acreage that you can do this? You know, I couldn't go on a field trip, so do you have times that you are open to the general public? We, uh, we have uh, what we call open houses, and those open houses are scheduled, but they are reservation only. And uh, so... You, ha you have to make a reservation because we have a limited space. Our facility is a working hospital. It's not a zoo or a nature center. But we have those um, oh, typically 15 to 20 weekends a year, or sometimes not even on weekends. Some folks can come during the week more easily. But go to our website. You'll see the calendar of events there. there. Um, if you are interested, we typically will announce when the schedule will be posted. Don't delay. They fill up in 48 hours. We have people come from all over the United States to attend these open houses, which blows my mind, but uh, but they do. So, all right, now I'm going to stop questions right now. I'm going to, Kendra, are you, are you here? And Renee can help me with it. Uh, so two of my colleagues um, are going to help me uh, wrestle this bird. Like I say, we'll get it out. And while I'm doing that, if folks who are up here can kind of back up and sort of get along the mode path there so that you're not more than four or five people deep so that you can see the bird. Uh, we, we need a little room and then I'm going to actually go out into the field and release the bird that way. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Okay. All right. Come on, guys. Big box. So before you go wrestling, Amanda wanted to know if you wanted to wear it. I think not. 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 I think not.
All right, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'll, when we get the door open, I'll reach in and grab the bird, get the bird out, and then we'll help get it under control and we'll take it below the Okay. Uh, now, I'll get the bird out, and I don't think you all will need it. Don't trip over your podium, Ed. Your podium. Don't trip over your podium. What did I do? Oh. Don't trip over oh, it. it. All right, I'm going to need some more room here, so you all are going to have to back up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Look at those feet. Look at those feet. Look at those feet. Yeah. 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 She's feeling yeah. better. <laughs> she's ready. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's ready to go home. Just leave the gloves on. Okay. Isn't she she a beauty? Okay. Yeehaw! <laughs> all right. Yes, indeed. Look at that beak. Uh, oh, we'll be all right. All right, now, if you all will now do what I just asked you to do a few minutes ago, which is to back up to the road, then we will give you a chance to get a shot of the bird. Now before we do that, come over here and we'll get your picture. Alright, somebody, uh, there we go, we'll get your picture and then Karen will get you in here as well. A lot of times the first thing that's going on in their mind is get away from me. But as they fly out 20 or 30 yards, often there is a moment when they realize they're free. And you will see it, if it happens, you will see it, they'll kind of stretch their wings if you ever saw somebody uh, shooting his cuff, you know, I, I'm cool, I want to see my cuff wings, but this bird, I hope it's going to be one of those, she's kind of resigned to the fact that I've got her in a grip right now, but once I launch her up, she's going to be driving up and her. So see if you can spot the moment when she realizes she's free. Where's her transponder thing? Are you going to show us or something? Oh, the transmitter? I, I'm afraid I can't. Okay, that's okay. You okay. may I see it as she flies away. <laughs> I see a little bit of on, on your back. Yeah, yeah on her back. back. There it oh, is. Oh, I see it. Okay. There it is. All right, everybody ready? John, I'm going to go out here a little bit. All right, on the count of three. <laughs> no, I'll count. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. See her shake the tail? Yahoo, there she hit second gear.